In this first exercise, we're going to get to know the Los Angeles River and its surrounding area. And at the same time, we'll learn a little bit about the basics of working with ArcMap, how to navigate a map, how to add and symbolize data, and how to get some information about the map features. We'll start with a blank map document and add a base map from the Add Base Map command. Take the one called Streets and click Add. Click Yes to enable hardware acceleration. Now grab the Zoom In tool and drag a window around the west coast of the United States and down into the Southern California region around Los Angeles. Keep zooming in until you can easily distinguish cities, freeways, landmarks like parks and airports. Now let's add some project data on top of our base map. Click the Add Data command. First thing we have to do is connect to a folder. Expand the directory down to the UGIS folder that was added when you installed the data. Click OK. Now go in and expand the Park Site folder, Source Data. Double click the ESRI GDB. Double click Boundaries and add the City Poly feature class. A layer of city boundaries gets added to the map. Go to the table of contents and toggle that layer on and off a few times. And click on the layer symbol and change it to whatever color you'd like. The name is somewhat cryptic, CTY underscore PLY. So let's go ahead and right click the layer name, go to properties, and we'll change the layer name to cities, which is a little bit more descriptive. Click the Source tab, you can see some technical information about where the layer is stored. One of the key things about a GIS database is that all the geographic features actually have attribute information behind them. So if we use the Identify tool, we can go in and click on any feature, in this case Santa Monica, see some descriptive information about it. And we see information about households, population, square miles, that kind of thing. Another way to get information is to actually open the attribute table for the entire feature class. So we go to the layer, right click, say open attribute table. Now we see an attribute table for every feature. Down the bottom of the table we can see that this feature class contains 25,374 records. These are actually all of the incorporated cities in the United States. We can expand the table by dragging it out to the left and the right. As you play with the table and drag it around, you'll see the different anchor points that are available. These are different places where you can dock the window on the top, or the bottom, or the left and right of the application window. If we right-click Cities and click Zoom to Layer, the map zooms all the way out to the entire United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, because this feature class includes cities in all 50 U.S. states. If we move the window out of the way, you can see the entire extent covered. Click the Return to Previous Extent button to get right back to where we were. Now, rather than sorting through all 25,000 records to find the city of Los Angeles, we'll use the population value, sort descending, and then Los Angeles comes up second on the list behind New York. Click on the left square box to highlight the record. Close the attribute table. Right click the layer. Go to Selection, Zoom to Selected Features, and now we're centered and zoomed in to the City of Los Angeles proper. You can clear the selection with the Clear Selection button. Now we'll go back to the Layers menu, right-click, go to Properties. We're going to build a definition query, which is going to show us only the City of Los Angeles. In the Query Builder, click Name, Equals. Click the Get Unique Values, which will populate a list of all the values in this table. Locate the one that says Los Angeles. Double click it to finish building the expression. Verify it. Click OK. What we've done with the definition query is to filter down our feature class down to a single record. If we open the attribute table, we can see that single record for Los Angeles now. Close the attribute table. Now we'll go ahead and add some more data. Click the Add Data button. 
navigate up one level to the Hydro Feature Dataset and click the River Feature Class. This is a layer of hydrology for the County of Los Angeles. Click the Identify tool and begin exploring this data set. The one that we're looking for is called the Los Angeles River and there it is right there. There's the first instance of it. There are different segments of it in this database. There's another one. The river runs east to west across the city, then turns south near the eastern edge and follows the 710 freeway down to San Pedro Bay. But because this is the only feature in this layer that we're interested in, we can use the definition query again to filter it down to just the Los Angeles River. So just like we did for the cities, we'll do the same thing for the Los Angeles River. So we click name equals Los Angeles River. That's our complete query. Click OK. Now before we apply it, we'll go over to Symbology and we're just going to increase the thickness of this feature to make it a little bit more prominent on the map. Bring it up to three point width. Click OK. And one last thing, we go back to the General tab. We can see some descriptive information about the layer and we can change the layer name to Los Angeles River. Click OK. Now open the attribute table for the Los Angeles River feature class. We're going to use the values in the description column to show you by example how that you can select by attribute. So open the select by attribute table, click description equals perennial, click apply, and now we can see a way that we can select records based on their values within the field, just like we did with the definition query, only now we're using it as a means of making a selection. We'll save our document by clicking the Save button and navigating into the UGIS folder under Parksite in the Maps and More folder. We'll call this first map document Lesson 1. Click Save. Now we'll go ahead and add another base map. This one's going to be an imagery base map. Click Imagery and Add. Now both these base maps are called base map, which is a little bit confusing. So we'll go into the properties of each one and rename them something more logical. The first one that we just added, we'll call imagery base map. Press OK. Then we'll go into the streets base map that we added previously and rename that one to be called streets base map. Press OK. Turn off the streets base map and turn on the boundary in places and the transportation layer. Under the imagery base map we actually have three sub layers boundaries and places, transportation, and the original imagery layer itself. We're going to create what's called a map sandwich by dragging the cities layer down underneath the boundaries and places and the transportation layer and above the imagery. Now our map is showing a little more context. Let's create a bookmark. Call this bookmark City of Los Angeles. This way we'll be able to get back to this point whenever we need to. Now we'll grab the zoom in tool and go down to the far southern point of the LA River where it dumps into the San Pedro Bay. Set the scale at 1 to 10,000. Actually down in this part of the bay it's actually known as Queensway Bay and the reason is that the Queen Mary ship is docked down here. Use the pan tool to kind of zoom around in this area, take a look around. This is a very interesting part of the city of Los Angeles. You can use the fix zoom in and fix zoom out tools to get around. There's this Queen Mary. Keep zooming in. You can see this is very high resolution imagery, but even the imagery will have a limit at some point as to how far you can go, and there it was. But we have a bookmark, so we can easily get back to where we want to be. We'll drag our cities layer back up above the imagery base map. We'll open the properties for the cities layer. Click the symbology tab and open the symbol. Let's change the fill color to blank or no fill color. We'll increase the outline width to 2 and change the outline color to a bright yellow. Click OK. Under the General tab, we will change the layer name to Los Angeles. Click OK. 
And now we have a nice yellow, easy to see outline of the city of Los Angeles. We're going to create a layer file for this particular layer that we can use later. In the table of contents, we'll right click the layer and save it as a layer file called Los Angeles Layer. Just to show you what's going on now, we'll remove the original layer and we'll go in and add our layer file that we just created. The layer file stores all the properties of the layer, its name, symbology, the definition query, everything, including the path to the layer's source data set. So basically what happens is the layer is added in with solid symbology and everything already set up. We're going to use this layer later on in the book. Now we're going to go in and explore the entire length of the LA River on top of the imagery just to get a visual sense of what kind of landscape we're dealing with here. We'll pull the scale down to 1 to 24,000, go up and grab the pan tool, and then just start manually panning to the east along the length of the river. This upper portion cuts through a fairly densely populated area up in the San Fernando Valley. You can see there are some parks and open space and some golf courses along the length. As we continue to the east, pass through the area around Forest Lawn Cemetery, Universal Studios. Now we're heading south. Coming up to the Dodger Stadium area, and the LA Police Academy, there's Dodger Stadium. Go ahead and create a bookmark at the Dodger Stadium area. Click OK. And in our Bookmarks Manager, we can actually save the entire set of bookmarks. We'll save these into our Maps and More folder, and we're going to call these Less Than One Places. So now we have two bookmarks in one bookmarks folder. Now we're continuing south, scrolling along through the downtown area, and we come to the border of the city of Los Angeles. Now we'll exit the map. 